Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Profotech Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning MySQL stored process tutorial for beginners. This is our part number 14. Inside this video session guys, we are going to discuss about cursor in MySQL stored processor. Up to previous video sessions, we had completed about the use of loop in our stored processor. Now we are going to start about cursor. So there are several questions basically hit to our mind something called what is a cursor, how can we use cursor or what is the basic use of cursor in MySQL stored processor. So we are going to take all the answers of these questions. So if I go to the next slide. Now about MySQL cursor, MySQL cursor in stored processor to iterate through a result set returned by a select statement. To handle a result set inside a stored processor, we use a cursor. A cursor allows you to iterate a set of rows returned by a query and process each row accordingly. So let's take a scenario of using for loop in our any language like in PHP, like in C and C++. So let's say that we have a for loop. So what basically that for loop will do, let's say that we have a query, that query selecting all the data from our users table and we have selected successfully 10 records from a table. Now we want that, we want to iterate all the 10 records actually we got from a table. So same scenario we are going to repeat in MySQL stored processor. We are going to take a result from the database, let's say that users and we are going to select the user data and we are going to iterate over each record or let's say each row accordingly. So to iterate over each row basically we use MySQL cursor. So this is the advantage or let's say this is the basic purpose actually why we use a cursor. Cursor is basically used to iterate through a result set. Okay. Now the second question is that how can we use or what is the syntax we have to follow to use a cursor. So in MySQL stored processor to use a cursor firstly we need to declare that. And to declare a cursor in MySQL stored processor, this is the line that actually we need to write called declare. Here we have to provide our cursor name. This is user defined name and cursor as a keyword and for as a keyword. This is the selector statement. It means that let's take a scenario where we are going to select all the data from our users table. So the example should be something like this declare cursor name cursor for and this should be something select all from TBL users. Now after declaration we have to open to use our cursor. So this is the line actually we need to follow something called open and cursor name. This is the name that actually we have declared. After those these lines we are going to set about the handler when the all rows actually we will read, read from our loop. It means that Let's say that we have 10 records and we have successfully get all the data something called 1, 2, 3 and so on up to 10th number record but from the 11th we have no records to study. So that's why we need to make a final handler when the record does not exist in our bucket. So let's declare continue handler. It means that if we have record then we need to continue over iterating over the result set. Otherwise in case let's say not found then we need to set a condition here. This line simply means that if we have records then we have to read from the result set or if we have not data means if we have no data remains in our bucket then in that condition we are going to set a condition. Now the fourth point, basically this cursor name contains all the result set data which actually we have done right here inside this select statement. Now we are going to iterate over each row of this cursor name and we are going to st store all the row step by step inside these variables. And finally after making use of all these four lines, finally all doing the logic we are going to close our cursor. So let's understand about the concept of cursor by making use of a simple and basic MySQL stored processor. So if I back to phpMyAdmin, now this is our database. Now inside this database, if you go to routine section, inside these routines, let's say that add routine and I'm going to provide our logic inside this model pop-up. So let's say that if we set something like this or close it again click on add routine 
and this is the pop-up actually we got and if I make some zoom again now let's say that get cursor data inside this stored processor we don't want any parameters now inside this body we are going to provide our logic so let's say begin and end here now inside this I am to declare some local variables so let's say declare and firstly let's say finished this is the status I am to declare and it should be int and let's say default value something called zero now again I am to declare one more variables let's say declare in which I am going to store all the emails of the user which actually we are going to take from our table so let's say emails a list and it should be where care and let's say the maximum length something let's say 500 and the default value let's say default equal to empty value now again I am to declare one more variables so let's say declare let's say declare and this variable basically is used to store the email address of each row actually when I iterate over the result set so let's say email let's say var care and it should be let's say 13 length and the default value let's say empty value now we are ready to declare our cursor so if I back to our slide and if I copy this syntax go at our PHM admin pasting it here now declare cursor name so let's say that user data this is simply a cursor name cursor for and I'm to provide the select statement so let's say that select let's say all from tbl underscore users table and if I open this tab into a duplicate tab go to our database now inside this database we have a table something called tbl underscore users now from this table we are going to read about the top five records so let's select all from tbl users and let's limit limit equal to five now inside this line we are taking our five results from our table and storing all the results set inside this user data this is the cursor name now finally this is all about the declaration of our cursor now finally we are back to our slides and if I copy this syntax now we have to define our terminating condition means if I go here so let's say declare continue handler and for let's say not found so when there is no record it means successfully we have read all the data from our bucket so in that condition I want to set this finished status let's say set finished equal to 1 this is basically a state indicating variable when it is 0 it means that still we have records to read from our bucket when the value is 1 it means all the data successfully we have iterated inside this cursor now after declaration all these things we are ready to open our cursor to read the data so let's open and the cursor that we have defined something called user data so pasting it here and finally we need to close it also so let's say close and finally pasting it here so finally we have opened our cursor and successfully we have closed that now inside this block we are going to read all the data from user data by the help of a loop so in our previous video session we actually studied about the loop so firstly we need to provide the loop label name so let's say user or let's say get email this is the let's say get or let's say get user underscore email this is the label that we have defined and here I am to make use of call the loop here and finally we need to also close this loop so let's say int loop and copy this label name and pasting it here and semicolon now if I back to slide and I am to copy this fourth number line actually inside this line we are going to fetch all the data what actually we have stored inside this cursor name and step by step or let's row by row we are going to store all this cursor name data inside this email so if I copy this email variable and pasting it here so email variable basically contains all the data actually the row contains if I back to table 
Now if I click on TBL users, this is my PHPMy admin error. So if I scroll to top, now inside this first row, we have called name, ID, score, email, password and so on up to created ad. But I want, I want that only email address should be read inside our loop because we have declared a variable of email address and this contains only a single value at a time. So let's change that here, select, let's say email, here actually we are taking email column, so select email from TVL users where limit equal to 5. Now successfully row by row, we are storing the email address inside this email field. Now let's say that, if we are going to put our terminating condition here, so if let's say finished equal to 1 then let's say end if then after getting the finished equal to 1 value it means that we have to leave this loop so leave and the label name we have to specify right here so these three lines basically indicates that when we get the value of finished equal to 1 then we are just go outside of this loop now let's say that we have no value of 1 so inside that condition let's say set and the variable that actually we have declared something called emails list which contains all the emails in a single line so let's say set emails list equal to we are going to use called the concat function of mysql now we are going to store or let's say email copy that and before that let's say emails list again because we are going to concatenate the value inside this emails list. So the previous values is stored inside this list and the next value actually we will get same comma here and after that we get the new value something called email address. Now pasting it here. Now what basically this line means? If you go right here, open a new tab and let's say that in the first line we get the email something called abc at gmail.com. In the second line we get something called def at gmail.com. So the, we are just concatenating this value inside with the first value separated by a comma. So that's why we have used called emails list. This is the previous value and we have attached with the new email address separated by a comma symbol. And finally, I'm just go outside of this close and let's select and this is the variables called emails list. All we have done now. If I copy all the codes, pasting it here. Now inside this course code, actually we need to understand about few steps about the loop we have studied inside our previous video. Inside this video, only we need to understand about the cursor. So firstly, we need to declare that with the SELECT statement. This is our result. Now we are going to iterate row by row inside this result data. So here we have declared our final condition, open our cursor and here we have closed our cursor. Now inside this cursor, we have declared our loop and fetch all the data row by row and is stored inside this variable. So back to PHMI admin. Now let's fill all the basic informations here and let's say contain SQL. Now if I press go button and we have some error and the error says that undefined cursor this is cursor name. So go at the code and successfully because we have declared user data as a cursor so we need to replace here as well. Now if I click on go button, again we have some error and this error basically indicates that actually we have somewhere actually forget to add something called semicolon and right here actually we forgot that. So put here semicolon and press go button. So successfully as we go top, we have created our gate cursor data MySQL stored processor. Now if we find that stored processor inside this list, something we have declared that. Now if I click on execute button, go at the top and we got null value means empty value. So again go to edit, let me check some data here. So inside this code as I think that if I scroll down, now actually we are getting the email address, email as a key from the table and the variable that actually we have defined as email. So let's say that user underscore email. So if I copy this variable name, 
I think that this was our mistake like variable name equal to the column name. So if I copy the variable name, go here and if I pasting it here, means we are using, means we are just reading our data and storing the email address inside this user email. So if I copy and paste right here, all the things remain same. Now if I click on go button, successfully we have saved that. Now if I click on execute button, go at the top and as we can see that all the email address means 1, 2, 3, 4 and the fifth email actually all the five records we have iterated and we read all the email address of all the five users. So this was our basic concept of using MySQL cursor. So here we have to follow the same syntax line actually what we had learned inside this video. First we have declare and here we have to define our select statement which basically takes a result data set from our table. We have to open, we have to set our terminating condition, we have to read all the data and store all the data row by row inside this variable and finally doing all these things we have to close our cursor. So inside this video session guys, if you went out, then please drop your comment. I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.